welcome back to another episode on Hobby Talk Army. Today, I'm going to show you how to rekey the lock cylinder for your Honda. This is for a 1994 Honda Accord. Uh, if you haven't seen the other videos of this project, you can check them out on my channel. I've got some playlists for it. Long story short, this car, both doors do not work with the ignition key, but I have a factory ignition key. So, I'm going to go over how to rekey the cylinder. I'm not really going to show you how to take this out of your car door. I'm pretty sure if you're this far, you can figure out how to get it out. Um, what you're going to need to look for is the kit, the rekeying kit. I found this online. It was about $55, $60 shipped. Um, it's an older one, so it comes with all the different keys and then extra springs as well because... I'm going to replace all the springs since this is about a 28 year old car just to help it out. Um, you're also going to need some tape. I'm using some duct tape, that's what I got. You could use masking tape, whatever. And then the key that you're going to key it to, obviously. And maybe like a little pocket screwdriver might help you out. Because first things first is uh, once you get the cil cylinder out, you're going to want to unhook this spring. Um, there's two little sections there that the spring will sit on and you're just going to kind of pry it up and you'll take this little white piece out with it and that will allow us to pull the actual cylinder out of the whole piece here and that will expose the little keys. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around, give you a close up and kind of show you what the next steps are. Alright, so... I just got to open all these little baggies, make sure they go back in the right spot. While I'm doing this, I'll give you a little update on what's going on with the Accord. So, I believe the last video I was doing some sanding and paint prep and stuff like that. Now, I was going to paint it myself, and I'll probably show you a little clip. I did paint half the car myself at home. So, uh, it didn't really go as planned. It did not go as planned at all. I, uh, I tried to follow all the steps. I uh, did the wax and grease remover after I sanded it down to 400 grit. I'm pretty sure I went too deep on a lot of areas. There's a lot of exposed metal. So, what I'm going to do is we're, just sa we're saving up a little bit more money, and I'm going to pay a professional to get this car painted the right way because there's also a change of plans this whole time I was hoping that I could fix this car for cheap and flip it to my friend because he really needed a car and I could help him out get him on the road because he missed driving stick shift and uh, that's that changed I had a talk with my friend and I just felt bad uh, selling this car to him because there was a lot more like little issues that he would have to deal with over time that I realized after the fact we have gotten this far um, sanding it and going through it so there's like there's a caliper there's a seized caliper I got to take care of um, the windshields cracked really bad the sunroof ended up cracking I'm not sure how um, I didn't put any pressure on it or anything. I think it just like finally Like I parked it outside for a day or so and I think the heat might have just Got to it after 28 years and and it I'll show you real quick. It, it cracked a, a Good oh wait never mind. It's closed. But anyways, it goes from that edge to like the middle of the glass. So that was unfortunate and then Real quick. I'll show you the side here but what, ha what happened, I painted it silver, I primed it, I did base coat, I did clear coat, but for some reason, it literally just peeled off the door. So, this is where <laughs> you gotta know when to let a professional do it, and let learn from my mistakes, guys. There's, there's things you can do, and you might be better than it at me, but, uh, yeah, obviously I didn't really get it done the right way. So, now that we have these figured out, the next step to do here 
is we're gonna gently oh here you go sorry we're gonna gently pop this up okay see that I'm trying to hold it there with my finger and then we're gonna try and pop we're gonna try and pop this one up too down here I'm gonna try and go under all of them okay so that there we go and it's kind of I had this earlier happened to me where the spring came off the piece of plastic you might want to try and keep the spring on the plastic just so you don't have to fight it as much going back in but basically you just take that off okay and you don't want to if if you do have it fall off oh sorry I'm not looking at the camera if you do have this fall off of the plastic um, you want to get it back on without bending the spring come on focus without bending the spring as much as you can because this is the spring that uh, allows your key when you turn it to snap back center okay so now that that's off we can carefully pull the cylinder oh my bad you can pull the cylinder out the front okay now oh wait I apologize you don't want to put the key in. So, put the key in. That'll hold all of these keys, keyways, in the cylinder. So here's your cylinder. Or, here's the outer ring. And this will only go in one way afterwards. See how it's flush there? So if I, if I take this and I spin it 180, it will go in. But see how it's not flush? So... It's only gonna go back in one way. There it is flush. See it's flush? Right there. And not flush. Okay, so now that we have it out, we can set this aside too. Now this is the part where you gotta be careful. Uh, basically what's preventing this from turning is you can see that some of these are flush, like this side's flush, and that one's sticking up. And that's not going to let you turn this key, sol uh, key cylinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to one by one replace each one of these until they're flush all the way around with the key in it. Now, there's tiny little springs. See those springs? Behind each one of these. And the spring sits in that cylinder and it sits underneath this little ear so each one of these that you pull out there's going to be a spring and like I said I'm going to be replacing all of those springs because it's old and corroded and you'll probably want to like wipe some lubricant in there as well um, like a silicone uh, like sil glide or something like that I'll have to look around my garage to see what I have I just brought my toolbox back to work. But anyways, so we're going to go through one by one and get it so that it's smooth. See, this one's smooth on that side, but then on this side, that same one is lifted up just a little bit. So we'll start with that first one. And what you do is I'm going to pull this key out. Be really careful because if you pull this key out all the way, you're going to lose a lot of stuff. Okay, so see how it's starting? See how that first one right here is starting to go back up like that? So now I can pull that out with my fingers or a little, if you have a, um, like a little pair of pliers or something. Okay, so... Okay, there we go. Come on. I don't want this to go flying everywhere. Okay, so we got it out. And there's that little spring. See on the left, that little spring? So I'm going to pop that guy out. I'm going to put it in this little drawer so I know these are old. And then we'll get 
a new spring. And we'll just drop it right in there, in that corner. Okay, so new springs in there. Now, I'm not going to show you the whole the whole scenario because then you guys will know my keys. <laughs> but these are labeled. And if you look closely, that to me looks like the number 3. So, on this key particularly, the first one was a number 3. Yep. Cuz I believe it goes 1 through 6. Yeah, so this was a three, and it was too tall. So, it's trial and error. I'm not really sure if it's, you know, you go up a number or down a number. But let's try a number four just to see what happens. So that's a number three. There's a five, there's a two. Oh man, this kit. Okay, this is frustrating. Okay, so the new kit, at least this kit that I have is not the exact same. They fit, but look, this one's a number three and it's slightly different. So, I'm just going to trial, trial and error this whole thing, and I'll show you what's going on. So we'll slide this back in. I'm going to push it down and slide my key back in. And we got it flush on that side. And... It's pretty dang close. Let's try it. I'm going to try a different one and see if it's any better. But you get the gist, okay? So I'll be right back. Alright. So for me, I think it's the copper one. It's pretty dang close. And then this side is flat. And if I go in here... I'll show you this one again. Pretty, it's pretty flat in this side. It's so close. You know, I'm going to have to try both on that one, honestly. But this is the idea. Okay, and then once you get that one in, the next step is to take your tape so that you can move on to the next one. And we're going to tape just over that one so it stays in. And you want it kind of loose. You don't want it super tight so that it can actually move and let you pull the key out. Okay. But that way it doesn't go shooting out with the fresh spring and all that. So now... We'll do the same thing, and we'll repeat the process. So, I'll skip through and show you the done process and while we're putting it back together, because you guys can figure this out. Just so you know, once you get your second one, same thing. Gently wrap it around with tape so you can move on to the next. This is where it starts to get fun. You having fun yet? Alright, so 
went through all of them. Got all my old keys there. Uh, like I said earlier, the numbers didn't really match up. Um, this is the aftermarket kit. But it did work. So, got all my new keyways in there. You can tell there's still a couple high spots. But, check this out. It did not work before, and now it turns. And if I take this out, and we try and turn it, it's locked, obviously. Put the key in. We can flip my key. So, what do we do? Yeah, open, close, center. So, okay, sorry, I had to double check that. <laughs> what do we do now? We take a small file and we are going to lightly file down the edges where they're just barely sticking up. Um, and that'll make it a little bit easier and butterier for it to turn and then we can put some lubricant around this whole thing and it should be good to go see that's that's backwards because it's not flush put it back in boom flush but that's it now my key or now my sil uh, cylinder is rekeyed to my key and I can lock my doors, start the car with this car, with this key, and we're good to go. So I just got to do this one more time on the opposite door, and then we're set. And I think, because it's like, I'll be honest, this is the first time I'm doing this. Um, I'm pretty sure, though, since I have the key code now, I can take this apart, I'll write it down, and then I can do my other door the same way. It might save me some time. I should have wrote it down as I was doing it, but I like to learn as I go, and we're learning as we go, and now you guys are learning, so it's all good. One more time just to show you it works. All good, because you got center to lock. It's either right or left to unlock the car, and then it's left or right to the same thing. It's lock and unlock. So it's good to go. That's how you guys do it. One more time. I'll show you the part number. And then all you do is put this back on. Reverse it. Reverse steps, I mean, to put that back on. This is the kit that I ordered. Um, you do have to make an account with these guys. But you, you don't have to be a locksmith. You can just skip the business info and just order this. This is for 90s Hondas from, like... I want to say, and you can look on their site, it'll say which years, but I believe it covers 94 to 97 Accords, a bunch of Acuras, I think some of the old Civics too that are in the 90s. Just make sure that it says that it'll work because there's a new one for the newer Hondas from like 2000 and up, and the new cylinders only have one in the shape of this where it's a full keyway and then the other ones are actually all of them are split like right down the middle and each one is two different pieces and that is their new style of cylinder and they probably updated it because for the most part you can bump key a Honda and get the door open um, so that's why they probably improved it but yeah I hope this guy's I hope <laughs> redo all right so I copied the same key pattern over to the second one and I reinstalled the spring and then I also this is what I used um, HHSK it's by worth it's meant for like hinges and stuff it's a non silicone no resin and no acid um, lubricant and you shake it and spray it on and then it evaporates and it leaves a really nice um, lubrication in there so you can see the springs working it's centering I can pull the key out get in there 
turn, let go, turn, let go. So, got them both keyed. Turn, let go, turn, let go. All good. And yes, one of my keys or cylinders is missing the little door, the trap door thing. So this one will probably get dirty soon. And um, But I can always do this again. If I want to spend the day at the junkyard, go pull a cylinder, bring it home, fix it up. But that's that. Well, I, I hope this helped you guys out. Um, it certainly saved me about 40 to $50 because the local locksmith said that if I brought them the cylinders and the key, it would probably cost about $40 per cylinder, which came out to be like 80 plus tax because um, they got to cover the labor and the parts. So this kit, I mean, obviously I could do probably five or six more cylinders with it so now if I need to do it later on I have it which is nice and I, I need to do two on this car and the kit was only like $55 and then with shipping it was like $63 to my door um, so yeah I definitely saved probably 25 to 30 bucks and I learned something new and it's super easy you just take your time tape off each one when you're done and then you're good to go so I hope this helped you guys out. All right, I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, but this is the part of the video where I like to talk about God, Jesus Christ, and just, you know, I'm your neighborhood hope dealer. So, uh, obviously it's been taking a while for me to get this car painted, and the process has been a very intense journey for me. I've been mentally beating myself up, uh, physically getting angry, and just frustrated. I believe God put me on this path to learn patience because I have been dealing with having a short temper and not good patience for many, many years. Um, so I've been learning patience a lot and staying humble, knowing that like I can't do everything on my own. So there is times where you need to rely on other people and sometimes you got to pay them what it's worth to get the job done right. So that's kind of what I'd like to explain to all you guys. It's, it's real easy to watch some YouTube videos and think you can get some stuff done. But a lot of the times it's good to learn it, maybe by watching the video, but it's kind of better to pay somebody to do it the right way. And you'll help them out. You know, it might be part of your journey to go help someone else out and pay them the cash that they need and for their skills that they learned and all that stuff. So, short and sweet, stay humble, be patient. When you fall seven times, get back up. Don't stay down getting beat up. Don't beat yourself up in your head. It's only going to make things worse. So, that's all I can say about that. I hope that helped you guys out. I hope it cheered you up. Like, I've been in that sinking ship. Sometimes you gotta know when to jump out and start swimming. So, anyways, God bless. Peace out.